All right, in this video we're going to talk about the quantum mechanical atom, looking at quantum mechanics, and we're going to focus on electromagnetic radiation here. Um, I will warn you now, I am going quickly. I am not telling you the entire story. I encourage you to check it out for yourself, uh, but I am going to give you a good brief overview as to why we study this. And the first thing we want to look at is why do we study electromagnetic radiation? And that's because of the pretty colors. We've known for a long time that if you put certain compounds in flames, um, recall from previous chapters that uh, heat is a form of energy, so essentially we're giving these atoms or samples of substances energy, we see pretty colors. The pretty colors that we see are um, a type of electromagnetic radiation, a part of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. The electromagnetic radiation spectrum includes things that we see as well as don't see. And so in order to really understand what's going on with the atoms themselves, we have to understand electromagnetic radiation. And so we're going to start by talking about electromagnetic radiation. Let me just get an image, all right, from the web over here. All right, I pulled an image from the, from the web so that we can look at it while we talk about electromagnetic radiation. Um, electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy itself. It is an energy, um, it has an energy and a wavelength and a frequency associated with it and it moves at the speed of light and lambda nu equals C. Its wavelength, and that's why we see the image here, the little cartoon on this row as a wave. It has a wavelength associated with it and the wavelength varies from very, very short on this end to very long on this end of the spectrum, which is just the display or the listing of the types of electromagnetic radiation. There is a frequency associated with the electromagnetic radiation, so lambda is our wavelength, nu is our frequency. The frequency is a count, like if I were standing still and it was passing me, I would count how many of these peaks that passed me in a given unit of time. Usually we count the number of peaks per second because it moves very, very fast. And then the speed that it moves at is the speed of light. The speed of light um, to three significant figures is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Again, very, very fast, essentially 300 million meters per second. Um, this is the fastest speed known. And um, of all types of electromagnetic radiation move at this speed in a vacuum. And the wavelength and the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation are inversely related because they both have to always multiply to give you C. So longer wavelengths have smaller frequencies and vice versa. And so one thing that we can do that we may be asked to do on the test is to calculate the wavelength given the frequency or the frequency given the wavelength, vice versa. Um, and they will always multiply together to give you 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And you can find lots of sample problems worked out for you um, regarding that simple plug and chug calculation. If we look at the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, uh, we see over here on the left at the um, shortest wavelength or the largest frequency, um, gamma radiation or gamma rays. These are real, although science fiction uses gamma rays a lot. These are real. It's a real type of electromagnetic radiation. It has a, a very short wavelength, a very high frequency. It's very damaging to the human body. Uh, we have this out there in the universe and our atmosphere screens us from the gamma radiation in the universe, although we also have some naturally occurring um, isotopes, some radioactive isotopes that give off gamma radiation, and we have to, to be a little careful and sort of screen ourselves from this gamma radiation um, because it's dangerous. It's, it hurts us. Um, after gamma radiation are x-rays, um, X-ray radiation also is harmful to organic living things, although we have found some use for X-ray radiation. Um, X-ray radiation uh, is, is such that it will pass through the human body. 
but it will be stopped by things like bones. And so if you collect the X-ray radiation, X-ray radiation after it has passed through a human body, you can see where the bones are. And so we do use this as a diagnostic technique um, to diagnose broken bones and things like that. So we have found some use for it, but you do want to limit your exposure because it is harmful to humans. Um, we, we limit our exposure to x-rays as well as gamma radiation, gamma rays, uh, because of the harm that it does to the human body. Ultraviolet radiation, which is also known as UV, is also harmful to the human body. Uh, again, there's a lot of all three of these types out there in the universe. It's produced naturally um, out there in the universe by the, the, the stars and the bodies of, of, of um, um, suns out there. Uh, but our atmosphere on this planet screens the, uh, har this harmful radiation um, and doesn't allow it to get, or at least doesn't allow most of it to get to the planet. So we don't have to worry about it except for on the odd, um, again, radioactive isotope that might be emitting some of these types of radiation. Some of the ultraviolet radiation does get to the planet, and this is actually a good thing. There are lots of plants that need ultraviolet radiation in order to survive, and so the small amount that does get to our planet actually does help um, with the plant life. If the plants all die, we all die. So uh, ultraviolet radiation is good. But again, uh, a lot of it is harmful to us, and so we try to limit our exposure to it. All three of these types of electromagnetic radiation are invisible to the naked eye. We cannot see these types of radiation. They would be in the same room with us and we wouldn't know it. And, and, and actually it would be bad if they were in the same room with us because they're, they're dangerous, they're harmful. Um, this very narrow region, and it's, let's see if I can, how much coffee have I had today? This very narrow region of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, which is one width of my paintbrush wide is the visible light. This is all we can see as biological creatures with our uh, eyes adapted the way they are and our brains adapted the way they are. This narrow region is what we actually see. And this bottom picture is it blown up so that we can see all of the pretty colors of the rainbow. Electromagnetic radiation in this very narrow wavelength and frequency um, if you spread out those wavelengths, you would see the colors of the rainbow. This is exactly what a rainbow is. Uh, white light coming from the sun is giving off this region of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. Our atmosphere does not screen it out. It passes on through, and it is we see it as white light coming from the sun, but if we separate it into the various wavelengths, with a prism or a grating of some sort, we would see the colors of the rainbow. After a rain, the little water droplets in the air, the moisture in the air, act as a prism uh, to separate the colors and project it, and that's why we see the rainbow. And we always see the colors in this order because they are separated by wavelength. Down here in the blue to purple or violet region, um, is the smallest wavelength up here in the red region is the largest wavelength. And that is the limit of our vision. This, this area here, this cutoff is a little fuzzy. Um, different people have varying abilities to see these wavelengths at the extreme. Uh, but by and large, this is the region that we can see as humans. Um, as we move a little uh, longer in wavelength past the red area, we get to the infrared area, and the infrared is again invisible to us. We cannot see infrared radiation. Um, the visible region and the infrared re region of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, these are not harmful to human beings, and that's a very good thing because the room you're sitting in right now is probably bathed in visible radiation and infrared radiation is present as well and they, these are all around you and they are not harming your body. Uh, infrared radiation is essentially heat. We have, um, we have all kinds of devices which will translate the, the signal of these types of invisible radiation 
into something that we can see, like an x-ray radiation. We can't actually see x-rays, but we can detect them and build an image. And this is typically what we call an x-ray, is the image that we see after the x-rays have passed through the body. Um, night vision goggles essentially collect the infrared radiation that is invisible to our, uh, our eyes and shifts the wavelength of the infrared radiation into the region of visible that we can actually see. And this is how night vision goggles work. Um, as we get to even longer and longer and longer wavelengths, we see radio waves, radar, TV, FM, AM, etc. Microwave radiation, which is a type of radar, is in here. These, in this entire region on the right, the energies of these, these types of electromagnetic radiation are not such that they're harmful to human organic living tissue. We have to be a little careful here in this region where the microwave radiation is. That is harmful to humans, but not because of its energy, but because it actually makes molecules rotate. Um, that's how microwave radiation cooks your food. When you put your food in the microwave, that type of radiation, which is invisible, you can't see it, um, causes the water molecules in the food to rotate. It doesn't break their bonds or anything. It just causes them to spin. Um, that spinning motion creates uh, heat, friction, if you will. And so that's how the food heats up. And that's exactly what would happen to your body if you were exposed to microwave radiation. All your little, little water molecules would begin rotating and heat up. And that's, that's bad. If we, if we heat up, that's bad. So anyway, this is a brief overview of electromagnetic radiation. This is a key formula. The wavelength times the frequency equals the speed of light. Um, and so we can calculate one given the other. Another key formula, and again, I'll let you look up. Um, I can't talk and write. I'll let you look up um, sample problems of it so you can practice. Um, they're just simple plug and chug problems. The energy of the electromagnetic radiation is, equal, is proportional to the frequency. This is the same frequency we see in this formula up here. But the proportionality constant is a constant. It's called Planck's constant. It is a constant numerical value. It is actually a very, very small value. It is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Its units are joules seconds. Um, the joule is a unit of energy. You'll recall from our energy chapter. And then the seconds cancels with the units on the frequency. The units on the frequency are 1 over seconds. We can, um, again, see that in the speed of light unit has meters over seconds. That's wavelength units times frequency units. And so this is Planck's constant. And again, if you're given the frequency, you can calculate the energy. If you're given the energy, you can calculate the frequency. And so I'll let you look up problems of that type um, and practice with those because you may see those on the test.